Hello everyone. In this chapter, we're going to talk about systematics and phylogenetics. So this is the science of how we group organisms together based on the traits that they have in common. For a long time, humans have puzzled about how we group organisms together. And, and this is important because once we group an organism in a group, then we can make inferences such as the things that affect one member of that group may affect members of the other group. So that can help us in understanding how animals behave or the, how they function, understanding crops and what are the requirements. So if we know that corn and wheat are related, then we can infer that the requirements for growing corn and wheat are going to be similar. And humans since the beginning of time or since we have records in Aristotle we started coming up with systems for classifying or grouping organisms. The one that prevailed is the one proposed by Carl Linné or Carlos Linnaeus as it is in Latin and his proposal is a hierarchical system in which uh, individuals belong to a small group and the smallest group you can belong is your species. So we are part of the species Homo sapiens and then from there, you can go into um, other bigger groups. So we go from the species to the genus. So we belong to the genus Homus, to the family, Hominidae, the order, the class. We're also mammals, subphylum, and so on. So every time you're belonging to a larger and larger group. Linnaeus also proposed a system for how to name organisms and his proposal is to use Latin to name the organisms. So all species names are in Latin and that's why they're written always in italics. In English, when you write a word in a foreign language, you need to use italics. So species names are always italized. And his system gives the species two names. It has a two-part name. The first part is the genus, which tells us which group they belong to. So genus can have multiple species. And the second part is the actual species. So that second part identifies that individual to only one singular species. However, they're always used together. So you always have to use them, um, both the genus and the species. And it can be abbreviated, but when you abbreviate it, you abbreviate the genus, as we have here, just a single letter for the genus, then period, and then the species name. And notice that when you follow, even though it follows the period, the species name is never capitalized. Another, another example of using the species name is when we say E. coli, we're talking about the, um, the uh, bacteria, E. coli, E is the abbreviation for the genus Escherichia, and coli is the actual species. And we have to use both in order to refer to that particular type of bacteria.